Welcome to CNU, the video series that will teach you everything you need to know to provide excellent nutrition care. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to do calculations for bolus and intermittent tube feeding. By the end of the video, you should be able to follow a seven step algorithm for calculating bolus and intermittent tube feeding and write a final prescription for a bolus and intermittent tube feeding regimen. If you find this video helpful, Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Let's get started. We begin by looking at the seven step algorithm that I just mentioned. When calculating bolus and intermittent tube feeding, the first step is to estimate the nutritional needs of the patient. Then, you must select an appropriate tube feeding formula, determine how much formula is required to meet the estimated nutritional needs, and divide that amount of formula by the number of feeding sessions recommended. At this point, you can calculate the energy, protein, and fluid load, establish the free water flushes, which should be given both before and after each feeding session, and decide if it will be a bolus or intermittent feeding regimen. Only once you've done all of these will you be ready to write a prescription. The best way for you to see how this works is through an example, and today we have Jane. Jane is a 49-year-old female who is an active smoker with a past medical history of oral cancer. Jane has presented to the hospital for surgery, where she will undergo a partial mandibulectomy, a total glossectomy, and the placement of a percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy for long-term tube feeding. You are the registered dietitian, and you have been consulted to assess the patient. A review of Jane's medical record reveals she is 5 foot 6 and 52.7 kilograms with a BMI of 18.7. Further investigation shows she has lost a total of 9 kilograms or 20 pounds in the past year, which is 14.7% of her body weight. On physical examination, she appears thin with moderate muscle depletion to the upper extremities and face. In addition to this, she is awake, alert, and able to walk through the hallways without assistance. Finally, you discuss the case with her doctor who tells you the plan is to eventually send Jane home with the tube feeding. Since Jane is awake, alert, and able to be active, she's a good candidate to receive an intermittent or bolus regimen. In this situation, it is actually preferred because it will allow her to be active during the day and avoid the need for feeding at night while she sleeps. To create an appropriate feeding regimen, the first step is to estimate the nutritional needs of the patient. For tube feeding, it's most important to look at calories, protein, and fluid. Because Jane has recently lost 20 pounds and has moderate muscle depletion, we can estimate these using a simple weight-based calculation with the goal of weight restoration, or weight gain. This will likely require anywhere from 35 to 40 calories per kilogram and 1.5 to 2.0 grams of protein per kilogram. For fluid, we can be slightly less aggressive with 30 to 35 milliliters per kilogram. Using the current body weight of 52.7 kilograms, this comes out to 1,844 to 2,108 calories per day, 79 to 105 grams of protein per day, and 1,581 to 1,844 milliliters per day. Once you have established the estimated nutritional needs, the next step is to select a tube feeding formula. If you have watched my video on formula, you know there are four categories and they are standard, pre-digested, disease specific, and blenderized. At this stage, Jane does not have any unique nutritional needs that warrant the selection of a pre-digested, disease specific, or blenderized formula. A standard formula will do just fine. Within standard formulas, we know there are differences in energy density, with formulas ranging from 1 calorie per milliliter to 2 calories per milliliter. For Jane, 
any energy density could technically work. Because I intend to give her enough formula to gain weight, I'd be most inclined to start with a higher energy density. The last thing I want to do is give her a very high volume that is going to make her feel really full and possibly cause discomfort. This time, I'll go with the 1.5 calorie formula, which is 76% water and provides 63.8 grams of protein per liter. Now that we have selected a formula, we can determine how much formula is required to meet the estimated nutritional needs. To do this, we take the total number of calories needed and divide it by the energy density of the formula. Here, instead of working with a range of calories, you can pick a single number. I'm going to take 1,975 calories, which is pretty much right in the middle of our estimated need. 1,975 calories divided by 1.5 calories per milliliter gives us 1,317 milliliters per day. Next, we divide the amount of formula by the number of feeding sessions the patient will receive each day. With intermittent and bolus feeding, this can be anywhere from 3 to 6 sessions per day. There are two factors you'll want to consider when helping the patient or their caretaker decide what is best. First, as the number of feeding sessions goes down, the volume required at each feeding session goes up. So, you definitely don't want to choose three sessions if the patient has difficulty tolerating a high volume. Second, as the number of feeding sessions goes up, the level of convenience goes down because the patient will have to dedicate more time and resources to feeding. I have found that a good place to start for a patient like Jane, who is relatively young and active, is at 4 sessions per day. By dividing the total volume by 4, we end up with 329.25 milliliters per session, which we can round to the nearest 5 milliliters to 330 milliliters per session. From there, we will use the volume to calculate the energy, protein, and fluid load. To get the energy load, you multiply the volume per session by the number of sessions, so 330 times 4 to get 1320. Then you multiply that by the energy density of 1.5 to get 1980 calories. For the protein load, you multiply the grams of protein in one liter by the number of liters of formula provided in a day. We have already seen that there are 63.8 grams of protein per liter of this formula. In addition to this, we know there are 1,000 milliliters in one liter, therefore 1,320 milliliters equals 1.32 liters. We can multiply 63.8 by 1.32 liters and end up with approximately 84 grams of protein. Finally, since the formula is 76% water, we can obtain the volume of water delivered by multiplying the total volume of formula by percent water times 0.01. Within the parentheses, you move the decimal place of the percentage two places to the left to get 0.76, then multiply it by 1,320, and the result is 1,003 milliliters of water. The last thing we'll do in this step is compare these values to our estimated nutritional needs, and we can see that calories and protein are satisfied, but we are short on fluid. It is for this reason that we have to establish appropriate free water flushes. To do this, we will need to take the desired milliliters of water and subtract the amount of water from formula. For Jane, we can take the upper end of 1,844 as the desired amount and 1,003 as the amount from formula, leaving us with a water deficit of approximately 840 milliliters. We also know we need to distribute this across four feeding sessions per day, and with this type of feeding regimen, we want to give water both before and after each session. The reason for this is to maintain patency of the tube, which is a fancy way of saying we want to clean it out to prevent formula residue from building up and clogging it.
Since we are giving four sessions, it means we need to give eight flushes per day. We divide 840 by eight and end up with 105 milliliters per flush. This brings us to the second to last step where we decide if it will be an intermittent or bolus regimen. Just as a reminder, an intermittent regimen is typically infused using a mechanical feeding pump with sessions lasting anywhere from 20 to 60 minutes. The bolus method is typically performed with a catheter tip syringe with the sessions lasting less than 10 minutes. If the patient has poor functional status and is expected to remain in a medical institution, it may be helpful to use the mechanical pump for an intermittent feeding regimen. Since Jane is active, capable of feeding herself, and planning to go home, we can anticipate she will be able to successfully carry out a bolus regimen. She will be trained how to do this prior to being discharged. Now we are ready to write a prescription. We recommend a bolus regimen of the standard 1.5 calorie formula. Infuse 330 milliliters four times per day via PEG. Flush with 105 milliliters water before and after each feeding session. Feed at 8 a.m., 12 p.m., 4 p.m., and 8 p.m. This provides a total of 1,980 calories, 84 grams of protein, and 1.84 liters of water per day. Our prescription is an appropriate starting point for the infusion and should be followed by monitoring of weight status, fluid status, and tolerance, and adjusted as needed. If we pretend for a moment that we decided to give an intermittent feeding regimen, the only thing that would really change is we would specify how long we would like each feeding session to last. Here is a summary for this lesson. When it comes to calculations for bolus and intermittent tube feeding, you can follow a 7-step algorithm. First, you estimate the nutritional needs of the patient. Then, you select an appropriate tube feeding formula. Determine how much formula is required to meet the estimated nutritional needs, and divide that amount of formula by the number of feeding sessions recommended. Next, you calculate the energy, protein, and fluid load, establish the free water flushes, and decide if it will be a bolus or intermittent feeding regimen. To finish the order, you write a prescription. There are several ways to estimate the nutritional needs but the easiest is a simple weight-based calculation for calories, protein, and fluid. Formulas can be standard, pre-digested, disease-specific, or blenderized, and within each category there is a range of energy density. Once a formula is selected, you determine how much is required by dividing the calories needed by the energy density. For example, if you need to give 1,975 calories and choose a 1.5 calorie formula, the required amount of formula is 1,317 milliliters. This is where you divide by the number of feeding sessions to get the volume per session, which is approximately 330 milliliters. At this stage, you calculate the energy, protein, and fluid load. For calories, multiply the volume per session by the number of sessions, and then multiply that result by the energy density. For protein, multiply the grams of protein in one liter of formula by the number of liters given per day. For fluid, multiply the milliliters of formula given per day by percent water times 0.01. If the amount of fluid does not satisfy the goal, Establish free water flushes by taking the desired milliliters of water and subtracting the amount of water provided by the formula. You'll want to flush the tube before and after each feeding session, which in this case would be 8 flushes per day. Divide the water deficit by the number of flushes to get the volume per flush. Before you write the prescription, you will want to decide if it will be an intermittent feeding regimen using a mechanical feeding pump or a bolus feeding regimen using a catheter tip syringe. In the example in this video, I decided to recommend bolus. Now that all calculations and decisions have been made, 
you write the prescription. We recommend a bolus infusion of the standard 1.5 calorie formula. Infuse 330 milliliters four times per day via PEG. Flush with 105 milliliters water before and after each feeding session. Feed at 8 a.m., 12 p.m., 4 p.m., and 8 p.m. If we pretend for a moment that we decided to give an intermittent feeding regimen, the only thing that would really change is we would specify how long we would like each feeding session to last. Either feeding regimen would provide approximately 1,980 calories, 84 grams of protein, and 1.84 liters of water per day. Thank you for watching. Check out these videos for more content just like this.